For the last few years since we saw the inflation genie has been out of control, all of us, including myself, have been paying attention to every single word these central bankers have been speaking, whether this is you know, a Jackson Hole speech or whether this is monetary policy review meeting, each time these central bankers like Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell or Bank of Canada's Governor Tiff Macklem, when they come out and deliver their speech, the market participants and investment strategists look for the keywords that they're trying to use to understand how they're going to influence the market. Keep in mind, I, I mentioned the word influence, not controlling the market. So after two years of constantly reading up their statements and understanding how they choose to speak certain words, I realized that they really don't control the markets. They can influence the market using their narrative, but in reality, they don't control the markets. The markets are controlled by the market participants. Investors, individual investors, bankers, hedge fund owners, foreign central banks, um, these are the market participants. They actually move the market. So they dictate the yields that they are, they are trying to get by putting their capital into these markets. And here's why I'm telling you this, because when you look at the bond market, the bond market is one of the biggest debt market in the world, and they all are interconnected with each other. So when you look at US bond market, after the most aggressive rate hacking cycle from US Federal Reserve, we are seeing the stock market all time. High. We are seeing the housing market didn't crack. We are seeing the Bitcoin has gone above $72,000. We are seeing gold is ripping higher, all time high $2,400 an ounce. Why? That is a question you should be asking yourself why the markets are still ripping higher even we have seen the most aggressive rate hiking cycle the reality is federal reserve doesn't control the market they can influence the momentum a little bit long term it is the market participants they move the market sorry for the interruption guys just wanted to let you know that we have a team of realtors which is covering the entire gta as well as some outside areas as well like branch region where i am based off and i help out the clients in this region as well so if you have any needs with regards to real estate transactions buying selling investing renting let me know there is a link down there where you can book a one-to-one -one consulting call with me and we will be more than happy to help you out let's get back to the video the another point to support this argument is look at the gold prices why the gold is ripping higher above $2,400 an ounce who's buying the gold right now it's not the individual investor or retail investor it's the major foreign central banks so the central banks outside the United States the, the foreign central banks they are loading up gold on their balance sheet so why well the answer is when russia attacked ukraine the western world they actually seized russian assets they cut russia off off swiss banking system they stole their assets and when the other central banks saw that they realized if this could happen to russia which is a superpower it could happen to anyone any central bank so since then the major foreign central banks have been diversifying their investment their assets their reserves outside us dollar so they have been selling us treasuries off their balance sheet and then they're accumulating gold okay because us treasuries has been one of the pristine collateral out there and all the central banks insurance companies hedge fund um, uh, owners investment banks they all carry U.S. treasuries on their balance sheet. Why? Because it is one of the pristine collateral. It gives them uh, better yields. It is the most liquid asset in the financial world. And it can be used as a collateral to rehabilitate multiple times uh, to generate more liquidity in the market. When they saw that Russia has been cut off and their assets have been seized, they realized that this could happen to them next day. They started selling U.S. treasuries and buying gold as a reserve currency on the balance sheet. This is the main reason why we're seeing the gold prices are going up. Why this has been accelerated in the last six months? That's the, that's the important question to understand. And the reason is the international market, the market participants are watching the Western world, especially US and Canada and European markets. And when they see the governments are running massive fiscal deficit and, and the projection for that fiscal deficit is not even going down, then they then that means that in future there will not be enough wealth to pay back that debt so when you take a lot of debt then you're actually pulling the purchasing power from the future into the present at some point somebody has to pay it back right 
And the only way government can pay it back is by collecting more taxes or inflating the debt away. So you can only collect enough taxes before the people start protesting against the, gov the government taxes. It's going to be a political suicide for any politician to start collecting more taxes. So there is not enough wealth being generated to, to collect more taxes. If you look at Canada, the productivity has been declining for the last quarters. One of the quotes from Caroline Rogers, we should have an emergency to fix the declining productivity in Canada. Because if you don't have productivity growing up, then we don't have enough wealth being generated in Canada. And if you don't have enough wealth being generated, there will not be enough taxes that the government can collect to pay off the debt that, that they have been accumulating year over year over year. And this is not a federal government issue. Okay, this is not a Trudeau alone issue. People who are thinking that Pierre Polyvier can come and fix this issue, you must be living in fool's paradise. Because in Ontario, you have conservative government, right? What changes Doug Ford has done financially to fix things in Ontario? You can write in the comment section for me to understand. But if you look at the previous budget briefing from Doug Ford, they are projecting $10 billion deficit for the year of 2024, 2025. Previous year, it was supposed to be a surplus. It converted into a deficit of $10 billion. And he's he's spending crazy amount of money buying unnecessary stuff. Like he allocated $36 million for buying some new helicopters. For what? You can't even catch a thief stealing cars. When you look at the government spending, which is going to only go up, this means the yields in the bond market is going to stay higher. So when you look at the U.S. Treasury market, you have U.S. 10-year Treasury is still hovering around 4%. The two-year Treasury, U.S. Treasury yield, is around 4.5%. If you look at Canada, the five-year, the most famous Canadian five-year bond is yielding 3.5%, okay? A two-year Canadian Treasury bond is yielding 4%. So when you look at these bond yields, it's moving sideways. 3.5, 4.5, 4%, like moving in, in middle of that range, which means the inflation expectation and the future growth is not looking good. It is demanding at least 3.5% interest rate from government spending. That means the mortgage rates that we're going to pay, the lending rate that we're going to pay on car loan, on any, any sort of other loan, is going to stay in that range for longer term. So no matter what the central banker will tell you, hey, we're going to cut rates in the next quarter. We're going to bring inflation down to 2%. They're just bluffing. They cannot control the market. The market is controlled by the participants and the, the geopolitical factors. We are seeing the oil prices is going up. What is it going to do with the consumer price index? We saw the carbon tax applied last week, which is going to make every single stuff that we buy and, and get it delivered is going to get expensive. So what does it do to CPI rating in the next couple of months? And today, this morning, we saw RBC chief is criticizing Christian Freeland, saying that if the Canadian government doesn't fix their budget deficit, then Canada may lose their AAA rating. If Canada loses a AAA credit rating, that means the investors who are buying Canadian bonds are going to demand higher yields, okay? When they're going to demand higher yields, which means the rates that we pay for mortgages, for loans, for car loans is going to go up. So even if Bank of Canada start cutting rate in the next two quarters, if the government is still running deficits for the federal or a provincial, it is going to keep the interest rate that we pay for our mortgages, for our car loans, for any sort of other loans is going to be expensive. And this is not a Trudeau's problem. Even if Pierre Polivier comes into the power, I don't know how he is going to fix it. The only way to fix it is going to be a painful way, which means austerity, which means cutbacks, which means less spending on education and healthcare and benefits. Then and only then you can, you can bring the budget in line with the expenses. Or you use technology like AI to create massive amount of productivity that could drive the consumer price downward, which of course create a lot of wealth, which creates a lot of taxes, which may be able to help government to balance their budget. But the later case is very less likely in this economic situation when the productivity has been declining for the last quarters. We're seeing foreign capital fleeing the Canadian equity markets. We're seeing political instability because of the federal government's uh, policies against energy sector. Combining all of these things, I don't know how things will get fixed, even if Pierre Polyphere takes the power. Unless he goes on to the massive 
spending cuts, which is going to be a political suicide for him. And every single Canadian will be hating him because they're going to lose their benefits, their health care, their education, and any sort of other spending that is contributing towards Canadian benefits. That is going to be massively hit. Unless you're going to take this bullet, conservatives will, will not be able to solve this issue either. So what are your choices? If you are an investor, you have capital to invest, what are you going to do? Are you going to keep your capital in Canada? Or are you going to move it outside of Canada to other markets like US, like uh, Turkey or Europe or China? What is your strategy? Put your comments down below. Let me know what, you, what is going to be your strategy to protect your capital and your future financial well-being. And if you want to schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me to discuss that, there is a link down there. We can you can book a call with me and, and we can discuss further options because investment strategies and, and how we can protect our financial well-being going forward. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.